Hi, it's Wendy Capewell, your relationship specialist. Today I'm going to be talking about expectations and especially unrealistic ones. We all tend to have expectations. There are things that we think that are going to happen or we want to happen. We look forward to them and maybe in our minds we've got it all planned out. Maybe we've got a day planned out and we really are looking forward to it. We get up in the morning and we have this idea that the sun's going to shine and it's going to be an amazing day and whoever we're with is going to be in a good mood and it's going to be fun. And then when that doesn't happen, we can feel really, really miserable and let down. And it's even more so when we're in a relationship or we go into a relationship because those expectations are often there. We have expectations about what the person's going to be like. We have expectations about how the relationship's going to work. And all of that is planned in our heads. And when it doesn't work out that way, we can feel quite deflated. That person isn't necessarily going to be or behave in the way that we have it in our heads. Because we see the world from our own perspective, they also see their world from their own perspective. And the two don't always meet. So just make sure that your expectations of the other person are really realistic. And that you're not putting it all on them. Because the chances are they're not going to be able to live up to your expectations or even want to. Let's put it like this. No one person can meet all of our needs. And in this modern world, our needs are far more sophisticated than in previous generations. Several generations ago, only basic needs were generally sought. A roof over our head, enough food in our stomach, a regular job, and a partner who could provide those and look after us. So, for example, when a woman was looking for a husband, she would look for somebody who was hard-working, had a reasonable job, was trustworthy, who could provide enough money to put food on the table and hopefully, in general terms, was kind to her and didn't cheat. He was looking for someone who would be a good homemaker and would look after him. But in this modern age, we want far more. We want an equal partner. We want a soulmate. We look for a financial wizard, someone who can sort out all those financial problems and be able to provide and bring money into the house, whether it's male or female. We look for a good lover. And by that, we have such huge expectations, especially now with so much on TV and in the media, let alone the porn sites. We want someone to share our leisure activities with. We also want a problem solver, so that when something goes wrong, we want somebody else to help us solve it, and someone to share those problems with. We're looking for a good cook, a great DIY expert, an emotional rock, and a best friend. That's a really tall order for any one person to be able to achieve, and completely unrealistic. But if that's what you're expecting and your partner doesn't meet those expectations, you're going to feel really disgruntled and miserable with your partner and in your relationship. So let's have a look at kind of daily expectations. So imagine that you're married. You've had a really busy day at work. You're feeling really stressed and tired. 
and all you want to do is have a nice meal and relax in front of the TV or maybe read a book. So in your mind, you have all that planned out. Instead, you arrive home to find your partner has decided to start decorating. Now you've talked about it, but not exactly when you are going to start. You look around and you find all the furniture is piled in the middle of the room. There's nowhere to sit. So bang goes your relaxation for a start. So you go to the fridge and find there's nothing there. Your partner hasn't prepared any food. They're so engrossed in decorating that the food shop has been forgotten. Your partner wanted to surprise you with the fact that they started the decorating. But in your head, you'd got this evening planned and it really doesn't match up to the one you had. Your expectations of a lovely meal and a quiet evening are blown completely out of the water. And this could so easily end up in a row, especially as you're both tired now because your partner has tired from decorating. You can see how it can all go wrong, can't you? For a start, it would have been great if you'd talked about these things in the first place so that you would have known what to expect. If you had let your partner know that you were really tired and all you wanted was a quiet evening too, and then if you discovered that your partner had wanted to surprise you, at least you could have made other plans by picking up some food on the way home. Now, this could end up in a really bad row, or if you could just work together, you could actually say, OK, let's just get some food. Let's pop out and get something to eat or get a takeout. Have that and then hot bath and just crash out on the bed. But it doesn't always happen like that, unfortunately. And sometimes there are situations when things crop up and we're just not expecting them. We're looking forward to that quiet evening and maybe your partner hasn't done the decorating but perhaps if you've got kids one of them has been really poorly and nothing has been done and you've got a child vomiting all over the place that again can make you feel really miserable so you can see that on a daily basis how those expectations can be really broken and affect that relationship really badly or at least your evening but if those things are bigger and you are expecting your partner to be the person who resolved all the problems, the person who's going to be your soulmate, the person who is going to be the one who fixes everything and they don't measure up, you can see how it can really cause a, a great deal of problems in your relationship. It really is a point of thinking about what your expectations are whether they're really realistic and whether it's really fair to put your expectations of daily situations, life situations, onto somebody else. I think it's one of the greatest things that causes problems. So that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast today. I hope you've enjoyed the episode today. I'll put some useful links in the show notes. I'd love you to review this podcast. It would be so amazing if you could let me know how you feel about it so that other people can listen too. If you have any ideas or thoughts about what you would like future podcasts about, then let me know. I'll put the link to my email in the show notes too. Thanks for listening and I'll speak to you again. Bye.